Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out the third birthday. This is thanks to a patron by the name of Mathaldu, and I didn't actually remember his name in the last take. But nevertheless, we are actually here going to take a look at it. There's a couple of things that I feel the need to mention before we hop in though. One is that I've never played Parasite Eve 1 or 2, which is this game's predecessors. And some people might find issue with that, some might not. But it's just worth noting that I haven't actually played those games. I believe they're more Resident Evil horror -y stuff, and I mean like PlayStation 1 Resident Evil era stuff, not Resident Evil 4, 5, 6, what have you. The second thing is that we're not actually playing on my save game. Due to the fact that my game crashed when I was playing it on my other Vita and I lost like two hours of progress because this game doesn't do autosave, I just kind of threw up my hands and went, fuck it, I'll go grab a save off the internet. Thank you very much. People who upload PSP saves to the internet, you saved me a lot of trouble. So, this is actually going to ask me to start a new game, but thankfully I have gone and checked. And we can actually go and play any episode that we like after we skip all the cutscenes and all that. I'm going to skip this because we can actually look at these videos later. But yeah, we can actually go and play any episode we want with any equipment we want. So I'm going to just make my best attempt to nerf myself because this game's already been beaten twice. And we will give it our best shot. So we have a quick look around first. You don't actually come back here that much. This is just your hub where you can go and do stuff. You've got a bunch of stuff that you can do here. There's probably a bunch of stuff I haven't even gotten in my game technically yet, but you can you actually go and talk to people. Incident. Some of them have voice clips, some of them don't. I'm not actually playing with the data installed because there are some things, some games on Vita that will act all right with it and some games that won't. And before we continue on, I should show you my settings in the PSP mode. I have bilinear filtering turned on and we've got the right stick being the D-pad because it's actually a relatively sensible way to play the game now that you've got two analog sticks. So there's not actually that much to see out there. There is the locker room which will let you play with your weapons and your outfit and the training air. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh no, yeah, you usually have to get to the roof. I guess everything else is locked off. The only other place you can go is the roof which is basically just a story bit. But we'll go and actually have a look around at everything first before we go and hop in because there's a fair amount of stuff here. This is the archive and this will actually let us view some of the game's cutscenes which is actually something that I want to do because the um, some of the FMV cutscenes in this game are actually really nice. I'll show you one now. Dream again. <sighs> Who are you really? I just... Having that dream again, weren't you? Is there another mission? The boss is gone. <laughs> and the FBI branch? They're gone as well. Are you sure? You're no longer under observation. We're moving you out of the cell into a room. This way. That's not necessary. I'm just looking out for you. You need to rely on me a little more. Do you think you'll be able to do something like that? I'd rather not. Stop being so hard on yourself. 
I don't know if you realize this, but you don't need a past in order to have a future. It's a survivor. It's just like my dream. I'm picking up a giant tremor. Bevel's changing. <laughs> Please don't move. You're not her. Got a match. Her name is Emily Jefferson. I came to tell you something about your dream. I'm sure you know. That poor girl. You have to remember. Remember where it all started, sis. Time zero. Try. What are you doing? Shoot her! Well, that was a look at a couple of cutscenes. I did a little bit of cutting there just to keep things a little bit interesting. The game's actually got some really nice production values. These cutscenes are... If you had given me this game and said to me that this was an early Vita title, I would probably believe you, at least in the cutscene part. The 3D part's not so much, but still, it actually has some really nice production values. So you probably didn't get the idea through those cutscenes what the actual t um, story is. And this is coming from someone who's never played Parasite Eve 1 or 2. So basically, Aya is a freak. She's some weird girl they found in the middle of bloody nowhere. And she has this weird ability to go back in time and possess people in order to actually alter the timeline. And this is actually kind of interesting. I'm just going to skip right back so that we can have a quick look. So, you've got a timeline of events going on here, which is actually pretty neat. Because it gives you a nice detailed view of what's going on in the world, which I actually like. But, as you hop backwards in time, the timeline actually changes. So, if we scroll down here, you can see that some of the timeline events have been changed. So, April 1, US to be wiped out in two years, goes to four years. And as you keep going back in time, the timeline keeps changing, people keep showing up and leaving, and it's actually a pretty neat concept, and it's actually engaging to some degree. <laughs> some degree, that's not a particularly nice way to put it, but it, it's engaging. It's a nice idea, and it's got me interested. So, let's go and have a look at the game's sort of mechanical systems. You might have noticed that I was actually um, wandering around in a bloody lightning costume. We'll get to that. So, there's a few things you can do here. So, what... The main RPG-ish style system of this game, because yes, it is an RPG, is it's got a leveling system, but it's also got something called over-energy. And over-energy is basically a kind of... Uh, I don't know how to put it. It's kind of a weird little upgrade system. It kind of reminds me of one of the systems in one of the Atelier games. But this is basically what you do to give yourself some kind of buff or boost. So, you have these DNA chips over here. And what these do is they give you some unique abilities. If we hit the triangle button right now, you can see that Aya may unleash a round of shockwaves during an overdive. Interesting. Uh, but you can see that there's also a bunch on this board already, including some pre-raise abilities, critical shot, rapid link, impact wave. So what we can do is we can actually go to one of the empty DNA boards. You only have one at the beginning of the game, but they've just given you four by the looks of things. So you can install chips on these boards and of course some aren't going to fit so say i wanted to put this here it'll actually change what one of them is like and there are different colors for different kinds of abilities so if i wanted to 
if I wanted to get like healing abilities, I'd go for green. If I wanted to get uh, other kinds of abilities, I'd go for orange. There is also red, which gives you bad abilities. So yeah, odds down, which is probably bad. Reduces the odds of getting an over energy chip, but it gives you an antibody. Generally, there's no reason not to throw out ones with red DNA. There are also mutations that you can get, which will change the board pretty heavily if you get get it right, which is interesting. But you get the general idea. You merge them onto the boards to get interesting abilities. And it looks like that we can have lots of DNA boards, which is actually pretty nice. In, in the game that I was playing, my save game, you don't get very many to start out with, but... As you can see, as you go on, it actually improves a fair bit. You also have weaponry. Now, you've always got this pistol here. And you can customize every weapon that you get, not just this pistol. But I figured I'd just show off how it works anyway. So you've got your different kinds of parts. And they will all do specific things. Like up the bullet power, which will give you more damage. Or up the impact, which will actually trigger overdive. Which is actually very important. So you kind of want to have as much bullet impact as possible in this game. You can also upgrade the amount of ammo you're carrying around, and even the accuracy. And the parts that you can customize on each weapon are actually different. So as you can see here, I can up pretty much everything about this weapon that I so choose. And there are lots of different kinds of weapons as well. So you level up your weapons individually, and that will determine what weapons you can buy, equip, and what mods you can equip to those weapons. So we can actually buy a different handgun if we feel like it, although I'm not entirely sure why you would. You've already got a good handgun. And you can also get sniper rifles, grenade launchers, and even some special kinds of weapons like a bloody... <laughs> like what, what appears to be a... A bloody... Uh, ch um, what's the bloody word for it? Light machine gun, that's it. Although it appears that I can't actually modify it. But we'll keep it around just for the purpose of demonstration, because why not? And we might as well keep an assault rifle around. It's pretty much recommended that you always keep an assault rifle. Just because they have the most ammo. You run out of ammo pretty quickly in this game. And as you can see, you level them up the more you use them. So, the weapons you use the most means that you'll end up with the weapons that you like to use. And you can equip all sorts of weird costumes. And it actually affects your armor. Which is a little bit of a shame. Because I'd like to wander around and say, like, the... The bloody maid uniform. That's just stupid. But you can wander around in different kinds of armor, but they'll absorb different amounts of damage. You want to hang on to as much armor as possible. So that's pretty much it. You can go into the other rooms to like try out your weapons and stuff, but for now we can just hop straight into the game. Now we can select whatever episode we like, which is actually pretty neat, and we can even go to an individual chapter. But what we're going to do is we're just going to head into the level on... Let's go Deadly Difficulty, why the hell not? I'm pretty leveled up. I'm probably gonna get my ass kicked. 11 minutes later. All right, we're back here because, well, that tank, that take, yeah, well, that's actually a pretty good response, actually. That take tanked. That absolutely tanked. So let's actually, let's give this another shot, but this time let's play episode three on bloody normal difficulty because Jesus fucking Christ. Right, let's give this a, another shot. Annoyingly, there's not actually that much combat, but hopefully with the difficulty on normal, we'll actually do a little bit better about this. But anyway, so I'm going to have to go back and start explaining the controls again. So, it's a PSP third-person shooter, which means you're going to have a few things that go weird or wrong with this game. But other than, other than the usual expected crap, there's a few interesting things going on here that I'll take the time to explain. So, move with the left stick, aim with the right stick, at least with this... Uh, control scheme because I have the right stick back to the D-pad. There are multiple control schemes you can pick and I'll show those off later, but for now we'll just wander around in our bloody knight armor and shoot a few dudes. You got L for your... Wow, that was actually really quick in comparison. You got L to aim and R to fire. L will do a lock-on except for this bloody machine gun for some reason. And... Your triangle button will actually let you do something called overdiving. And overdiving actually lets you swap between dudes. Which is actually a pretty neat idea. Because it has you constantly swapping between people to try and avoid getting into trouble or uh, moving them behind cover. Because the AI is usually pretty stupid. It might move behind cover by itself, but it's actually pretty unlikely to do so. Rovers will attack. 
Otherwise, it'll usually just do something silly like stand out in the open. Oh dear. I walked right into the edge of it because of course I did. Yep, run, you don't stand a chance. That is absolutely right. I have been screwed by those things before. And... Brain work with me here. Uh, yeah, but you've got three dodges on the X button. The third one will send you flying a lot further, but it will have a recovery time. Square is your reload button, and it is also your weapon swap button. Triangle is your overdive button, so you hold it and use the D-pad or the analog stick to swap between people that you want to swap between. A circle will throw hand grenades, but hand grenades aren't particularly great in this game. Their range is really small, which is... Not great, but, you know, deal with it. They're actually really powerful if you get them in the right spot. The game does have out, does have RPG mechanics, which means that the fact that I'm shooting these dudes and they're going down immediately is not representative of the game at all, but there's not really much I can do about it. I was playing on Deadly, and it was a little bit more representative of how much health your traditional enemies have, but yeah, your overall damage does go up as you play through the game. And there's not really that much I can do about that in this demonstration at the very least. So, we're actually about to get into some combat, which will be great. I'm going to use the pistol just as a challenge, but I assume that it's going to do a lot of damage anyway. No, that's actually about correct. That is actually about right, the amount of damage you do normally. I assume it's these weapons that I'm using that are uh, super high damage. No, they're not. Okay, alright. So this will be slightly more relevant. So these are enemies that you can find in the game. The general idea is that you lock on with these... You, you lock on with weaponry, or in the case of this bloody heavy machine gun, you don't. I need to try and get behind cover, but the problem is there's always that AI dude fucking me. So, alright, duck behind here. And now we can stand up and aim, except I can't actually aim at something that's directly above me, because fuck. Alright, so... You shoot dudes enough, and they will get stumbled. And if you stumble them enough, you'll, you'll be able to get what's called an overdrive kill. So see that orange triangle there? Hit the overdrive kill when that shows up. Oh shit. Snatchers. Hit the overdrive kill when that shows up and you'll do a bunch of extra damage. The majority of the game is based around getting these sorts of attacks and kills, because you want to beat the crap out of these dudes as fast as humanly possible. And the only way to do that is by getting overdrive kills, which means increasing the bullet impact of your weapons. You can also make it so that your weapons do more damage and all that, which is, you know, it's perfectly fine by itself, but I would recommend going for your overdrive kills as much as humanly possible. Because the overdrive kills are the most useful thing you can do in this bloody game to deal damage bar none. It's also required to do a lot of... It's also required to do... A, 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 a damage to certain enemies. So we can actually swap to another dude now if we like. But yeah, we beat the crap out of those snatchers because thank God for difficulty. Uh, it looks like we've been, giving a, we've been given a resupply room. Oh no, I don't think this is actually a resupply room. Never mind. Uh, no? Hang on, let's swap to another weapon. I take it they want me to blow this up. I guess not. And there's no overdiving. Huh. Hand grenade? Well, that'll sure do it. <laughs> just blow myself back at the same time. No, it doesn't look like a resupply room. It looks like this is just going to be another challenge room. Oh, it's a reaper. Okay, time to run for it. Bloody Reapers always give me these bloody chase scenes. Oh. Oh, fuck you. Right, uh, oh great, we're, we're back here again. Have to blow our way out of here, I suppose. It's a shame. I don't actually like these chase scenes because even on normal difficulty, these fuckers, these Reaper fuckers do stupid amounts of damage like one hit kill half the time so you do have to run away from them but it is unbelievably easy to get trapped because you don't know where you're going you just have to repeat the scene over and over again before you actually stand a chance of making it out alive which is 
honestly extremely frustrating. They're easy enough once you've got the once you've got the layout of the worlds down. Um, and by the worlds, I mean the levels. This looks more like a resupply room. Yep, this is a resupply room, which means there's a boss fight coming up. Because they've given us a bunch of stuff, and we can go and repair our armor, which does actually take damage, annoyingly enough. So you have to repair the damage on it, which is kind of annoying, actually. It just means you take more damage, and if you forget to do it, well, you're fucked. But anyway... Yeah, you can actually listen to what these people are doing. They'll give you a little bit of backstory of what's going on, which is nice. And we can just move on. They'll actually just follow us in. Chief, there's... Avoid touching the infrared traps. Oh, I guess it's not a boss fight. They did say it was full of traps, but I just assumed that was because of the boss stuff. This is Russo. We're taking a respite. Get your ass over here. Right, well, th there will be a boss fight eventually. The last games that I've played have been absolutely ridiculous about the fucking owl. About, about the fucking boss fights. Like, there's at least three or four in every chapter, and I'll give the game some credit. The game's... I'll give the game some credit. The boss fights in this game are actually pretty cool. However, most of them are also really fucking annoying. It really depends on the boss you're fighting at the time. But the um, yeah, the general idea is that it's going to be a massive pain in the ass to fight a boss most of the time because you don't know what they're capable of. And on normal difficulty at the normal leveling set, you're basically screwed because they're eventually going to throw out a one-hit kill attack of some kind and it's going to screw you. Now, I'm going to actually show you another mechanic that's actually kind of useful and gives you something to do with your AI teammates. He's not in cover. Why are you not in Get back in cover, please. Thank you. Right, no, hang on. Okay, he obviously wants me to be this one. Why are you running over here? This fucking AI, I swear to Christ. Alright, so. If you have an AI compatriot in cover, you can do what's called crossfire by having a dead dude. Wonderful. You can do what's called crossfire by having them both behind cover, or by having an AI dude behind cover. And if your dude is behind cover for for long enough, and you aim enough at a dude, you'll be able to do crossfire, which is basically a bunch of extra damage, which is nice. And if you hit, no, it wasn't want me to do here. I guess he wants me to get. Oh no back up again and he's gonna yep yeah. i'm actually pretty close to death here which is something i'm a little bit worried about but thankfully i do have that revive chip which is nice they always explode yeah thankfully i do have that revive chip but i just do want to try and avoid dying as much as possible and we have more traps and orbs which means there's actually some combat to be done which is nice Let's swap to another dude and see what we can do. Because you can actually overdrive through walls, which is pretty cool. But yeah, as I was saying, the bosses will often have a one-hit kill attack that you can't see coming until you've been hit by it at least once. Which is horrendously annoying in the grand scheme of things. Just mainly because of the overall difficulty of the bosses in general. It just... Drives you fucking mad after a little bit. Gotta try and take this guy out to save my mate. There doesn't seem to be any sort of penalty for losing dudes, but yeah. Uh, generally, you don't want to lose them all just like immediately. You'll want to try and save as many of them as you can. Right, time to show off the rage ability. So you hit triangle circle at the same time when your liberation meter's full, and you get access to power pistols, which are really good at not only doing overdrive kills, but you're also invincible, move really fast, and have infinite ammo. And you're also really damn powerful. So, you do that when you're in a tight spot, more or less. There doesn't really seem to be a particular reason to use it. Outside of like a... Oh, for f fucking Reaper, shit. There doesn't seem to be a particular reason to use them outside of just areas that you're in trouble. Which, you know, not the worst time. Like, definitely not the worst time to use it. But there just doesn't seem all, you know, in the middle of like a boss fight that you can't actually damage a dude in normally. Those are your two main places. Ah, oh, shit. Those are your two, two main places 
to use a, um, let's see if I can draw his attention. Nope, that guy's dead. I should have just focused all my attention on this orb. Oh, that's a, that's a zappy beam. Let's not, let's not deal with the zappy beam. Well, I evaded the traps and I've got the feet for it. We'll get into that shortly. But yeah, it's, it's just annoying how many one-hit kill deaths there are in this game. And I wish they were a little bit easier on them. Maybe on easy mode they don't do that. But it just seems kind of insane to do it on normal mode. Especially when you're fighting the enemies. And it really is just kind of like this. They're not massive pushovers. But it's not like they're particularly hard to take care of after the first or second time you do, right? So it's just kind of disappointing that the game is... um so insistent on that. Don't dive out of the, the damn cup of the fuck. The hide, damn it. Hide. Really fucking hard to do a um, bloody crossfire when he, he won't stay behind cover. This fucking AI, I swear to Christ. But yeah, it just seems kind of insane to do a series of one-hit kill attacks on bloody normal difficulty. That doesn't seem like what normal difficulty should be for in the grand scheme of things, is what I'm trying to say. I'm surprised we haven't come across a boss yet. There's usually one by now. Especially with how often you have to retry because of those one-hit kill attacks. Oh, bugger me. Right, let's run away from that thing. Let's actually run away from that thing. I did say this game had nice production values, and this does actually look pretty good. It actually runs pretty well too, but it's, I mean, it's a fucking shit. It, it, it runs pretty well, and that's probably because it's a PSP game running on the Vita. Games that have run on the, um, games that run on Vita via its emulator actually run better than they would on the PSP, because the emulator's got a higher internal clock, which is actually a, you know, a pretty neat thing. Yeah, overall, the gameplay is, like, when you're not dealing with one-hit kills and stupid enemies that you have to make an effort to avoid, the actual combat is pretty good. Like, the guns, the guns feel like guns. You don't, you can't just spray in a general direction, at least with the basic ones, and not expect to, like, um, and not expect to hit them every single time. I don't know if what I just said was right, but yeah. You can't just spray at enemies because they all have pretty natural recoil patterns. And... Well, there are a lot of different kinds of guns. You get sniper rifles, shotguns, you can use whatever kind of gun that you like. This guy's going to turn into a monster in a second, which means I'm going to want to shoot his ass. Oh no, no, he just appeared to have died like a little bitch, which is a little unfortunate because it means that I've got this back up, but whatever. But yeah, the actual shooting, the actual fighting the monsters, and even some of the boss fights where you actually get fair warning that something really bad is coming, it's actually pretty good. Like, I'm, I'm enjoying the bits that don't feel like they're screwing me unfairly. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, shit. Oh, great. More of these things. And I'm out of ammo. Great. Uh, let's just use a sniper rifle instead, shall we? Which has basically no effect because it's... A sniper rifle from the troop that was already here. Oh, for... well, that's a game over. Open up the flank. Oh no! Thankfully, they've popped in a bunch of troops for me, so I can just spend some time shooting the crap out of these things. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to rescue my dude in time before he um. Ow. Before. Oh no, there we go. I actually got him out. That's nice. Oh, what weapons does this guy have? A basic assault rifle. I'll take it over the fact that I've got no ammo on basically everything else. Hand grenade! Oh, ow, ow, ow! But yeah, actual combat, when you're not being absolutely screwed by stuff you can't predict, actually pretty good. 
the boss fights are actually pretty great as well. The the production values on them are ridiculous at times. Like one of the fights halfway through chapter two, so not even like the major boss of chapter two, but the one that was halfway through it is kind of awesome. It's this free fall bloody um it's this free fall boss fight with shit all around you and you just basically have to keep swapping between five or six people shooting at this um bloody thing that's falling in with you and it just looks amazing and is actually a pretty fun boss fight to boot it's really cool actually and there's a bunch of boss fights in the game like that where they're bloody huge take up half the screen and it's just some good fun to play which is Really nice. I'll be damned. We did it. And the controls, while they're not... What's the word? While they're not absolutely amazing, they're, they're workable. You can have some fun with them. This is another um, resupply room. So I get the feeling they're going to put me into a boss fight. So what do, I actually want to swap my weapons out while I'm here because that... That bloody machine gun there is completely worthless. So let's actually swap for something that's useful. Like a, um, I might as well pick, a, pick up a sniper rifle. So which one's going to give me the most power though? Unfortunately, this is going to have no impact. So it'll mainly be useful for dealing some damage. And unfortunately, this guy doesn't actually have anything in the way of shotguns. So, all right, we'll just stick with the rest of what we got. We can also go and customize that sniper rifle, but really, I don't think I will. And uh, go back to my protective gear and heal up the night armor because it's just all over the bloody place. Uh, okay, there's probably a bunch of ammo pickups just around the corner. Yep, there we go. I am. We've briefly checked the files. There are no records of you having a younger sister named Eve. But we'll keep looking. Alright, let's do it. Oh, well. Actually, does anyone else have any better weapons? No, it's just all the basic stuff. Let's just cancel that and move that. on. Because... I pretty much guarantee this is going to be a boss fight? Close enough. Right. These guys are dicks. Thankfully, I can just do this. So yeah, the actual game is overall pretty interesting. Like, I like the way they've gone about doing the whole third-person shooter on PSP thing. And it's still relatively compatible with the way the Vita works. You just kind of have to get used to not being able to dual stick aim in the general sense. The game itself is actually really enjoyable with its action. The bosses are alright. The difficulty is a bit of a bitch, and I'm not really that big of a fan of the way they've done it, at least on the normal difficulty. I mean, I'm making this look stupid easy. These guys would be taking like four times the amount of damage if I was using a weapon that was more appropriate for this level. Like, that's more appropriate right there. You see that amount of damage? That is what we call... That is what we call the actual amount of damage you'll deal in the third birthday when you're playing it regularly. But to say I'm not enjoying it would be unfair to it. Because I am actually enjoying it. It's it's pretty good. It's got good production value. It's a lot of fun to swap between dudes and just beat the crap out of everything. All the different weapons are interesting. It's even interesting because um, of how when you swap dudes, it actually they all have different weapons. So you have to deal with, you know, swapping to a dude if you want a sniper rifle, for example, which is a pretty neat idea and it's actually a useful it's a useful thing to do when you're actually playing the game in normal mode and like you're not horrendously overpowered like I am for example the enemy variety is interesting they're still introducing new enemies halfway through the bloody game which is pretty cool is that a reaper that's a reaper fuck me Oh, but thankfully, we actually have the fucking satellite cannon. No, I'm not kidding. This is actually... This is not Gears of War. Also, I thought we were inside, so I don't understand how that works, but... We apparently have access to a fucking satellite cannon. 
which is kind of awesome in a completely overpowered way, but I don't care. I love it. It's stupid. Oh, that one's coming from me. I need to be careful. Oh, fuck that Reaper. Where the fuck is it? Fuck it, I'm out of here. I gotta run. I gotta make a. I gotta. I gotta leg it. Gotta go. Can't leave. Not good. Also, apparently that's out of range. Uh, time to swap to someone else, I think. Swap to someone with a shotgun. That's a good idea. Unfortunately, the guy with satellite cannon is fucked. Can I actually get Crossfire going? I can! Yay! I actually got it going for once. Reaper. As you can see, these things are very hard to hurt. Do I have someone else who has a satellite cannon? I don't. I'm kind of screwed, aren't I? I'm guessing I have to take this thing out the hard way. Oh no, someone's coming in with a satellite camera, I think. But you know, just for the fun of it, and to show it off again. Let's just liberate the fuck out of this bastard. Yeah, he's hurting. And I have a dive, and he's dead. Oh, it is actually showing me a cutscene. Who would have thought? Bit weird that it didn't show me any for like 20 fucking minutes, but... Captain Russo, I'm at the rendezvous point. That is some really nice F FMV work. Doesn't look compressed or anything on the Vita at all, even with bilinear filtering, which is usually a problem. Eve! A ghost? You know what, I'm just going to skip this, because this might be a, um, story spoiler. Wow, was that really the entire episode? Okay, um... Yeah, as you can see, you get ranked for how many times you die, how many times the bloody soldiers die. Uh, that was surprising. Usually there's this, like, giant fucking boss fight. Uh, let's see if I can actually, um, pull that back up. Jump cut. Alright, so I've put the game up to hard, and this is actually where the boss fight happens. It happens just, just after this scene, so... I figured I might as well show it off anyway, and as you can see, I'm doing a lot less damage. It's annoying that you can't do the crossfire when you're actually firing at a dude, which is... I don't know if that's because of the technical limitations of the Vita's control scheme or what, but... It's honestly more annoying than... It could be. But anyway. Now I can choose to overdive into the babble, I believe. Oh, wait, no, I have to go and do, uh, take out those other orbs first. But yeah, I actually... Um, other than the annoying as hell difficulty spikes, the third birthday is actually pretty good. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Gotta take out the orbs. It looks good. Sounds pretty good. Not great. I mean, the voice acting leaves a little bit to be desired. But the... Yeah, just the overall quality of the gameplay... Uh, I mean, after hearing about... After hearing about how this game was basically a... A stain on the name of Parasite E, which is about the sort of image I got from listening people talk about this game. It's a shame, really, because this is actually a pretty cool idea. Like, being able to jump into other dudes and 
using them as part of your strategies is actually pretty neat, although the enemy AI is a bit too retarded for it to work particularly fantastically. We can use the satellite cannon! God, they love bringing in the satellite cannon, don't they? Ow. Right, should probably overdive to the guy with, well, not only the satellite cannon, but the orb to take out. Right, okay. Took out the orb, and no, I don't want to... Right, I should have put it down. Satellite cannon. Satellite cannon? Satellite cannon. You can take out all the enemies in range at once. That looked like it hurt. Let's, um, let's hurt, hurt him some more. And try not to get knocked over by something I could Jesus wet. Right. right. Fuck this. I took out the orbs. Let's go take out some more. Thankfully, time slows down while you're in overdrive, so I could. Oh, fuck. I actually got hurt. Uh, that's not good. Probably um try and liberate everything before I die. And I'm I'm dead. Yeah, not much I could do about that. But thankfully I'm back up. That's um that is some awesome little tech I got going on there. Right, let's let's focus on taking out these damn orbs. Reload, please. Two. Reload, please. Try and avoid getting knocked over. Really? Must be an invisible wall there or something. Jesus, I'm taking a lot of damage. And I'm actually dead for good this time, because they're not actually sending me any reinforcements for some reason. Well, screw trying to show you the boss fight, because I'm not going to be able to actually do it, am I? So, there are a couple of other things I didn't mention, like there's little achievements you can get for pulling off really hard stuff in the middle of the game, and there are some weird cheat codes you get by beating the game up to like 10 times, which is kind of ridiculous, but that was a look at the third birthday anyway. It's really fucking hard, and that's kind of unfortunate. Because it, it just seems unbalanced and unfair when you get some things that can just one-hit kill you all the bloody time. But, it's still a pretty good third-person shooter. And, I mean, if it goes on sale for something like 10 bucks, Actually, I don't think it is actually on sale on the PlayStation Store anymore. I'm gonna have to look that up, aren't I? Wow, it is actually 10 bucks. That is certainly something. Uh, you know what? For ten bucks, it isn't that bad. And I mean, if you're up, if you like this sort of thing, I'd say go for it. I couldn't actually find it on the Vita store when I looked for it, but it's on the web store, so it's fine. But yeah, um, I don't think it's that bad. Bit hard, but not that bad overall. I might keep playing it if I find the time in 2025. So. This has been Blue Maxima. I hope this was enjoyable for Mithaldu, who was the patron who sponsored this video. I will see you all next time.